So before we talk about the history of mathematics, let's introduce a few terms from our colleagues in the social sciences. The culture of group is the totality of all their activities, how they speak, what they eat, how they dress, and most importantly, for us at least, how they do mathematics. A group of people might have a written language. This leads to the creation of written records. History is the study of the written records of events. We say that a culture is prehistoric if it has no written language. Another important distinction is whether a group of people lives in a permanent location or move around on a regular basis. Civilization is a culture of people who live in permanent locations. In other words, it is the culture of people who live in cities. It's often contrasted with barbarism, but that's just a derogatory term used by the Greeks for people who didn't speak Greek. The proper contrast with civilization is nomadic culture, the culture of people who move around on a regular basis. While our focus will primarily be on the history of mathematics, which relies on the written record, we'll begin with a short overview of the prehistory of mathematics. Now, if we don't have written records, we can only infer the existence of mathematics from archaeological artifacts. Now, the most natural way to record an amount is to use what's known as a tally mark, one mark for every item you're counting. If the markings are made on a durable surface, the object may survive to be discovered by archaeologists. The oldest, maybe, mathematical, maybe, object is known as the Lebombo bone, which was discovered in a cave in South Africa during an excavation in the early 1970s. The bone itself dates back to about 40,000 BC, and it has 29 notches on it. Since there are between 29 and 30 days between full moons, it was probably used as a lunar calendar. Or not. So the bone is actually broken, so we don't know if there were originally more notches. And because we are talking about prehistory, there's no manual of how to use the bone. So even if the bone only had 29 notches, just because it could be used for one purpose doesn't mean it was used for that purpose. Similarly, in 1937, an excavation in Czechoslovakia, um, no, the Czech Repo no, no, Czechia, uh, led by Karl Absalom, found a wolf bone on which notches were carved. The bone dates back to about 30,000 BC. There are two groups of notches. The groups have 30 and 25 notches and are separated by two longer notches. Since the time between full moons is close to 30 days, and the bone was probably used to keep track of the date. Or not. Again, the user's manual doesn't exist, so we don't know what this was used for. In 1950, Belgian explorers found the Ashango bone in what is now the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The bone dates back to about 18,000 B.C., and, like the others, the bone has several series of notches carved on it. We still don't know what it was used for, but the notches themselves suggest there was some mathematics involved in its creation. There's actually three sets of notches on the Ashango bone. On one side, there are sets of 3, 6, 4, 8, 10, 5, 5, and 7 notches. On the other side, there are sets of 11, 13, 17, 19, and 11, 21, 19, and 9 notches. Again, there's no user's manual. We have no idea why the person who created the Ashango bone marked it up this way. But in contrast to the Lemon bone and the Czech wolf bone, there does seem to be some sort of higher ordering of the numerical quantities. And so while any claimed use of the Ashango bone is purely speculative, it is the oldest artifact to suggest any mathematical relationships. 
and so we'll say it is the oldest known evidence of mathematics.